Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Okay. Last week we started talking about how, uh, growing up spiritually. And um, we talked about some of the different stages of growth, and in, in, even in spiritual growth, the parallel natural growth. The babyhood stage, talked about the childhood stage. Uh, we talked about um, manhood stage, you know, growing up and becoming a, a spiritual adult. And so this week we're going to get into what manner of man or woe man are you, okay? And, uh, wow. So what manner of man or woman are you? And so let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll pick up 1 Corinthians chapter 10, down around verse 32. Sometimes I get there and decide to back up a little bit. That wouldn't be the first time I've ever done that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 32, we'll just start right there. It says, Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. So we have, spiritually speaking, three races of men. You have the Jew, which is the natural, na natural. It's, it's a new way of pronouncing things. The natural lineage of Abraham. The natural Jew. So we have the Jew. Okay? They, have, they still have a covenant with God. And God's covenant to the Jew will be fulfilled. Okay? Um, and natural. It's natural covenant with the Jew. And then we have uh, the Greek or the Gentile, which we get to say is heathen. If you're not a natural Jew and you're not born again, you're a heathen. <laughs> heathen. Well, what's, Gentile. We refer to it in the, in the scripture, they call them Gentiles. Or sometimes you'll see the word Greek use, you know, nor to the Greeks. That is referring to the, the heathens. He, heathens will be Gentiles or Greeks, okay? And then the third one he says here is the church of God. That is the spiritual seed of Abraham. That is not the Jew that was one outwardly, but one inwardly, whose circumcision is not of the flesh, but of the heart. We are spiritual Israel. And this, we, are the, we are spiritual Jews. Okay? If you're born again, the church of God is spiritual Israel. You're a Jew. So God recognizes uh, ethnically three races of men. The natural seed of Abraham, the unsaved humanity, and then the church of God. Okay? All men fit in one, whether you, it doesn't matter what color your skin is, you fit in one of those categories, okay? And those categories are what matters the most. If you're, an, if you're a heathen and you don't have Jesus, you're a heap load of trouble when you die, okay? I mean, you, that, that, you're, you're in big trouble. Um, so our spiritual status now, so we have three natural, we have three races of men, but then they have a spiritual status um, inside the church of God. Or, or, or so forth. You have natural man, which is uh, unsaved. You have um, carnal, which is saved but fleshly. And then you have a spiritual man. So let's talk about the three different things this morning. We're going to talk about, first of all, the natural man. He's unsaved. He's a, he is an unspiritual physical man. They are just, you know, and we get, people get mad about what sinners say and what sinners do. Sinners are going to sin. Sinners are going to say what they say because well, that's their nature. It is their nature to be heathenistic. Now, I saw something the other day. Um, uh, one of our, Larry Tucker's daughter-in-law put a picture up. This girl had, um, she, they had, they went to tattooing their face. They actually went in with scaffolding and cut flesh down to the muscle and made a pattern on both sides of her face. And it was re bright red where the muscle was. I mean, it might turn your stomach. You know, I mean, you talking about tatting, and of course, that's, that's about as bad as a guy that's got the big gauges in his jaws where they're like this, and you can, you can see all the way through, he's got his tongue cut in half, and I mean, people are doing some crazy stuff, and they're getting, you know, well, what's wrong with a little tattoo? Well, it didn't start out with a little tattoo, now it's the whole sleeve, it's down the back, it's down the legs, you know, and get, some guy put, puts implants on his head, can snap stuff on there so he can be a lizard, cut his tongue in half, he wants to get a tail that figure out how to put an organic tail, actually a real tail on his back so that he can have a tail and be a lizard man. I mean, the world is, is just messed up. But that's what they are. That's because their master is messed up. And he's trying his best to destroy the image of God in humanity. But, but this girl's face is ruined for life. I mean, there's nothing they can do to fix it. I mean, and that's what it's going to do. It's going to scar with these indentations all in it for that pattern. People say, oh, it's beautiful. No, it's sick. We should lock people up like that. 
Now, now, now we celebrate it. But this is what's going on with the unspiritual physical man. They're, they're looking for satisfaction. They're looking for different things. Um, and, and they reject God. You know, the, what they want and what's for them is, is what they do. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. See, we, we expect uh, unsaved people to understand Christianity, to understand things of God. Now, our job is to preach the gospel and let the Holy Ghost deal with them. And let the Holy Ghost bring them into the kingdom. Let the Holy Spirit deal with their heart. Okay? Uh, you're not going to you're not gonna be able to persuade them. King Agrippa, the Apostle Paul with the King Agrippa, talked to him and shared the gospel with him. He said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Well, that's not good enough. Almost ain't good enough. You know, that only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> okay? Almost. That's the only time almost counts, all right? But not in spiritual things. So the unsaved man is not a spiritual man. He's motivated by his flesh and demons. See, demonic influences come on his flesh. That you, a normal person doesn't cut their face up like that. Okay? Well, that is demonic influence. You don't cut holes in your jaw and space them out so you can see through it. That's demonic influence. It's not, it's not, it's not normal. It's not, it's not normal for a woman to remove body parts so she can be a man. Or for a man to remove body parts so he can be a woman. Okay? These things are not normal. They are demonically influenced. And because they're children of darkness, that's happening to them. So they're, this is what the natural unregenerated man does. They keep going further and further and further and further and further. <clears throat> Further into darkness, further into that place where they you know less less light, more darkness, and they they're looking for things to make them special, and uh, and demonic influence will cause you to do weird things to feel special. I mean, I mean you've seen the guy's whole face and head and everything's tattooed, and uh, I mean just just completely, you know. And they say, well, it's art. It's not art. It's, it, this, there's a demonic why? Well, because man was created in the image of God. And so Satan wants to destroy that image that man has of God. And by having man totally uh, just destroy him, his own looks and appearances. Um, some, some girl just a few months ago wanted to have her legs, and a doctor did it, amputated. So she could, uh, because she felt like she was a, 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 para, a quadriplegic or a paraplegic or something. And they amputated her, her perfectly good leg. The doctors ought to be shot. I mean, they're, they're, they're just as sick as anything for them to do. Cause, but you pay them enough money, they'll do anything. You know? He should have been arrested and, and executed for doing that. Because she wanted to be like, a, like somebody who didn't have legs. Yeah, that's, that's it. They wanted, they're trying to identify with something that makes them special. Okay? And that's because Satan has blinded their eyes to the truth. Okay? <laughs> um, the, 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 the devil ruled man, or the sense ruled man, Romans 8, 7 and 9 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You're in the flesh, you cannot please God. Okay? And then he gained, they gain their knowledge from your senses. You cannot gain revelation knowledge through your senses. Now your senses are your, your sight, your smell, your taste, your hearing, your touch. And the, 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 the carnal, unregenerated man, the only information he can gather is through those senses. Okay? So reality to him is all those things. See, absolutely opposite of faith. Okay? Everything you get, all the knowledge you get is through your senses. You, can't, you, don't, you don't get revelation knowledge. You don't get understanding about spiritual things. Okay. Um, he, now this man walks according to the course of this world. Ephesians 2 says, and you were... You hath he made alive, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, who were dead in your trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation. That's old King Jimmy for lifestyle. Okay, conversation is old King Elizabeth in English. It meant lifestyle. Okay, the manner of life. All right, not, not, not bios, but manner of how you live, the way you conducted yourself. Okay, we all had our Matter of life or con conversation in times past, listen, in the lust of the f our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, without, even as others. So the unregenerated man is a child of wrath. He is governed by 
his flesh and the lust or desires of the flesh. That's why somebody goes, you know, they, they start doing things to their body or they just go out and they, get, they just, you know, they, they shoot up or they just, you know, they, they, they want to go have sex with 70 people this weekend or whatever they're doing to satisfy the desires of the flesh, that's just being driven by what their flesh wants to do. This is an unregenerated man. See, uh, Christians can't live that way. They cannot live that way. That unsaved man is without hope, without Christ, and without God in this world. Ephesians 2, 11 and 12 says, Remember that you in time past, being Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh. That is, the Jews called them uncircumcised. They were, remember Peter, remember, not Peter, <laughs> Peter. Peter was in the Old Testament. You know, now, uh, um, David said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine to defy the armies of the living God? And so they refer to the unsaved. See, what the, what the uncircumcised? They didn't have a covenant or relationship with God. Circumcision meant they had a relationship with God. They were in covenant with God. And so he, he, here we find out that the, the people who are outside the covenant, who are um, called uncircumcision about that, which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that in time past you were without Christ, how, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Unsaved people are godless. They're without God. Now, they don't have to stay that way. But they are without God. They don't have God. You know, we're all God's children. Well, no, not really. That, that's, that's a misnomer. God created humanity, but we're not all his children. Okay? We become children of God when we get born again. All right? The, the, those in covenant with God through the Old Testament were uh, deemed children of God, in, in, in almost, but not even in the New Testament since they weren't children of God. Okay, the unsaved person is not a child of God. Now that means to some people, well, we're all God's. No, you're not. You're going to hell. As a matter of fact, Jesus said of the sinner in John eight forty four, "Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill." <clears throat> so who's their, da their daddy? The devil's the daddy. <laughs> <clears throat> Satan's your daddy if you're not saved so no, you're not God's child now God didn't plan on leaving in that way he made provision so you could through the new birth become born again and have become a child of God okay God wants that that's his design that's the plan he made but the unsaved man is not he's without God he's without hope in this world man if you don't have Jesus you don't have any hope you are in, you're in blue of trouble Okay, <clears throat> and the understanding of the unsaved is darkened. Ephesians four seventeen says in eighteen. Therefore I say unto you and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. That blindness keeps them out of the things of God. Now, you know, we're locating people. This, we're not, this isn't the evangelistic service. We've got to go get them saved. We do. That, that is our job. We're locating where people are this, you know, this morning. If you're unsaved, this is where you stand. You don't have God. You don't have hope in this world. You're blind to the things of God. I mean, you are in trouble, okay? Now, God may plan to get you out of trouble, but um, <clears throat> you've got to know where you are first. You've got you, you to know where you are before you can get out of it. Anybody ever, ever, anybody ever been traveling and got lost? Now, what did you, have to, you had to find out where you were so you could fix it. We were, um, I remember a number of years ago, traveling over in Europe, and uh, the person riding with us we had the map. And they said, turn right up here. We were, we were in Spain. We were coming out of the, we were coming out of the mountains of, um, from over from Andorra back down into Spain, and we were coming down, we were coming down out of the mountains. And they said, turn right up here. And we turned right, and we went, and we kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. I'm thinking, this just doesn't, this don't feel right. And... Uh, and the person with us spoke Spanish, so we, we, we thought, let's stop. No, 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 let's keep going. We're, we're right, we're right. Finally, we, we pulled off, and he, they got out and ran in and, and talked to somebody and um, came back out and took the map and went. <laughs> they had it upside down. We were supposed to turn left. <laughs> we had to drive 30 miles back, and we were in this, we were in this Ford, Ford van from Europe. It wasn't anything like you ever seen here. It was a Flintstone mobile. 
I mean, you had to kick the bottom out and pedal, I mean, and hit the ground to keep it going uphill. I mean, we, we could get going 55 coming downhill with it to the floor, winding it out with everything she had, and as soon as you started back up, it go, <laughs> it barely make it up the hill. So um, we, we made it back, but it wasn't easy. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, but when you're lost, see, we had to find out where we were so we could get back to where we needed to be. And see, lost people need to know where they are. You've got to locate. And even in spiritual people got to locate themselves so they can move on in God. Okay? You know, there's a lot of teaching out there right now about things that are just aren't accurate. And uh, they've taken teachings on the grace of God and manipulated it. By, actually, Jude says they've turned the grace of God into licentious, lasciviousness, King James. Licentiousness is the Greek word. And it means wantonness. It means just abandon, you, you abandon yourselves to do whatever you want to do. And that's not what we're supposed to do in the Bible. We're supposed to walk with God. God, Jesus did not come to liberate us from the authority of Satan so we could continue living the way we were living before we got liberated. Okay? Now, if you remember back in the, uh, oh, well, if you don't remember, but if you read your history, a lot of the slaves, after they were emancipated and liberated and the war was over, and they were saying, people come, you're free, you can go wherever you want to, just sat on the plantations. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. They had nowhere to go. They were free. But all they knew for generations was working in those fields. And they did not know where to go or what to do. And so many of them just stayed there. And ended up, ended up becoming sharecroppers and, and working with the people who had owned the plantations, uh, those who were able to keep them, uh, because the carpetbaggers from the north, if you're a northerner, we forgive you, hallelujah, came down and it just, you know, took, just emaciated the south. It was just totally emaciated. But the, they stayed there and they, they became sharecroppers. They became workers together. And they kept doing what they had been doing before, but just under a different whatever. But that's all they knew. And see, a lot of Christians get there. They get, they, all they knew was living out of the flesh. And then you get some bozo come teaching that you can stay in the flesh. No, you're not supposed to stay in the flesh. Okay? Now, what's, what's the natural? This is, now, we start talking about the natural walk um, uh, we just, for the sinner. Now, for the Christian, when you're living in the flesh, you're called carnal. Okay? Now, these are babes in the Lord, but they're not newborn babes. What are they? They're the eight-year-old who's still nursing and wearing diapers. They don't want to. They don't. They don't want to. They, they, they want. They want to keep the bottle. They want. They don't want to do anything. They don't want any responsibility. They just want someone else to take care of and do everything for them. They're. They're not willing to grow. They don't want it. All, okay, carnal Christians, and see, carnal Christians love sermons like, "You're under grace, and it doesn't matter what you do. God loves you." And see, there's a truth there. The truth is, no matter what you do, God does love you. But the implication is that no matter what you do, there's no repercussion to it, and that's not true. Apostle Paul made it very clear that whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh, he said this, he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So what's that mean? That means you can't keep living like a sinner and expect to get Holy Ghost grace-filled results. You can't do it. But people are teaching that and people do, and, and what? Carnal Christians just lap it up like a dog in a bowl. All right? Yeah. Um, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3. Apostle Paul writing again to the church at Corinth. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual. Sorry, my, my, the light is really... You know what? I think I pulled my thing up too far this morning. I'm way further north, and I'm really catching some bad light on, on top of the, uh, my, my tablet here. That is much better. Yeah, that's way better. Woo! I can see. I mean, I need my glasses, but I can, really, I can actually see not without the glare now. I, brother, could not speak unto you as spiritual. Now, what if I, listen to this. Paul, right into the church, says, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, what, flesh ruled, flesh dominated, even as babes in Christ. Now, he's, now listen, they're obviously not babes because he's saying, I couldn't, I want, I'm wanting to speak to you, but you're acting like children. I want to help you. I want to speak to you spiritually, but you're, you're, you're not able to deal with it because you're a babe. Okay. I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for you are carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? The Amplified Bible says walk as mere men. Actually, I think it says mere unchanged men. You're still walking like you had not gotten saved. You're still acting like you had not got, oh yeah, but you, well I bet. I want to testify I got saved seven years ago. 
And you're still acting like you, 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 you're a heathen. Hello? I mean, I, I, get, you know, I get people call me sometimes. I'm, I'm like, oh, my gosh. They're drunk. They call me, they left the church. They call me, they're drunk. I'm like, where are you? I'm in a great church. What, what, what do you mean you're in a great church? You're doing really good. You're, you're plastered. You know? Uh, I don't think church help. That, you know, you're getting a whole lot of help. All right? Now you, need, you need to grow up. You need to stop being carnal. You need to trust Jesus to help you through your emotional problems, not, not, not Jack Daniels. Jesus Christ, not Jack Daniels. You know, it's not, you know, not going to help you. Now, here Paul's not talking about newborn babes. babes. Here he's talking about people who should have grown up by now. Peter said in 1 Peter 2, 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Um, the, un, the, the carnal Christian is a creature of the flesh. Um, Moffat's historical translation from 1901 says that the carnal man is a creature of the flesh. Another translation says he's body ruled. What's that mean? Your, whatever your little heart, your, your, not even your heart desires, your flesh desires. Now, have you ever gone somewhere and you, you went to the all-you-can-eat buffet? Now, you know when you go, you already pre-planned to sin. <laughs> there is no temperance in what you're doing. There's no moderation in what you're doing. You are going with the purpose of gorging and stuffing yourself. We all know that, don't we? You know, you don't go to Golden Corral because it's top-notch food. If you want a steak on the high end, you go to Ruth's Chris. You get that 1,200-degree platter coming out where the steak comes out sizzling in the butter. And they put it on the table and say, watch the platter's hot. You're thinking, yes, it is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know? And you, cut the, and you cut that certified Angus beef steak, you know, and you, mm, and you, 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 you roll it around in the butter that's on the thing here. And you say, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm just lusting over the food. Hallelujah. But I do it in moderation. <laughs> Anybody hungry yet? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So, um, let me get back to where I was here. So, they, and listen, the carnal Christian demonstrates fleshly attitude. They backbite, they're bitter, they're jealous, there's strife, there's divisions, there's envying, there's selfishness. These are the people that, they'll say, I love the Lord, I love Jesus, and they're causing all kinds of trouble in the church. Now, babies don't cause trouble in the church. Everybody knows they're a baby. But it's those who present themselves as mature but are carnal. That's the ones that cause the trouble. You see? See, a baby doesn't cause trouble. Oh, they're just, everybody goes, oh, they're a baby, you know. I mean, if, if the babies are crawling around, they pull, they pull a sheet or something, and there's a glass sitting there, and it dumps them. But nobody gets all crazy with the baby. Now, when you're eight, you go up there and go, just to see what happened. You ever hear Steve Harvey? He's at a mall. There's a woman, an uh, uh, African-American woman at the mall with her baby. And then across the mall, there's a little boy. And he's just throwing a fit call down in the mall. I mean, kicking and screaming and hollering. And the mom said, get up, honey, get up, honey. And that, that black, uh, black woman went, if you ever act like that, I will kill you. Do you understand? <laughs> baby, have not you done anything? <laughs> just, you see it? If you ever act like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, if, 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 you're, if your boys go to school and, and they look at a glass of table and, and there's a glass, something and they snatch out to see what happens, I'm sure somebody's going to get light, lit up. Is that right, Tim? Somebody's going to light them up. You'll light them up, won't you? If Sandy's there, she'll light them up for you. If they do it, see, see they st now, if they were six months old and they were crawling in and grabbed it, you know, trying to pull themselves up or whatever, or eight months old, and it pulled it, they're a baby. But when you're acting like a baby and you're older, you're causing trouble. You, you, cause, you cause things. And see, Christians get into the church, and they don't grow up, and they still act like children, and they think they can get away with it. And the whole time, they're causing divisions, backbiting, strife, and all kinds of stuff going on in the church. They are carnal. They're just flat-out carnal. And they, listen, they need to grow up. You've got to grow out of carnality. That means you've got to put some effort into it. You've got to put some change into it. You've got to stop being carnal. You've got to act right. You act right by seeing what the Word says for you to do and then doing it. You, you, you drink the milk. Paul said, I wanted to feed you with meat, but I couldn't because you're still on milk. Now, it doesn't matter if you are eight years old. If you've, all you've had is m bottled milk 
and strain peas and carrots, you're, you're not going to be able to handle um, a T-bone steak. Because your, your system, what are you? You've got to, no matter how, you've got to start introducing other things in slowly and, you know, and getting them prepared for it. You know, I, you know the strain stuff is a, is a step, you know. I, listen, I know you moms. Y'all, eat, y'all would feed the kids and eat some yourself. I know it. <laughs> oh, this is good. My, my kids went to school with us. Some girls, they were, they were obsessed with being skinny. They would, they would eat strained carrots and peas for lunch. High schoolers trying to stay skinny. That's just nasty. <laughs> you know, babies just, they love it cause, because what? It's a step from the milk to eating something heartier, something stronger. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to be taking those steps in spiritual growth, moving from the milk of the word, moving to the strained peas and carrots of the word, moving to more solid food until you're actually on solid food. And once you get there, you usually can't take a kid and get them back on strained peas and carrots. They're looking at it like, you know, I'll eat the peas and carrots, but I ain't eating that mess. You know what I'm saying? Those Gerber jars are thinking, yeah, they're good for paint now, but they ain't good for eating out of. All right? Hallelujah. you got to grow out of it. Now, the spiritual man. Kenneth Hagin said this. He said, the spiritual man is the one, listen, listen to this now. The spiritual man is the one who knows what belongs to him in Christ Jesus and takes advantage of it. He is also fed regularly at the table of the Lord and saturates himself in the love of God. One of the signs of maturity, even in the natural, is you come to the stage that it's not all about you. Now, you know this with kids. And, and, and I remember um, in the uh, ninth grade, ninth grade at Wesleyan, the ninth grade biology class, if you're in honors biology or if you make an A in regular biology by that time of the year, you get to go on the field trip to Wilmington. They go down to the marshes, and they go to the uh, aquarium down there, and they, they spend the night. They go to, they, they go to the aquarium, and then they, they you take uh, little uh, kayaks to go out in the marshes and stuff, and, they, and, and it's a field trip for them, okay? And uh, Janie, when uh, Shannon was in that group, Janie chaperoned, and she's there, and she called me and says, Honey, you ain't going to believe this. I said, Well, let me hear it. She said, one of these girls down here came out with a pair of pajamas on, and the pajama pants said, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. And, of course, knowing some of the people at that school at that time, it was exactly right. It's all about you. Everything's all about you. It's all about me. It's all about... See, that's immaturity. See, when people grow and mature, it begins, you begin to see the needs of others. You begin to weigh the needs. And Christians, they come to that place in Christ where it's not just about, listen, listen, hear me good now. We teach prosperity. We teach God wants to bless you. We teach that God wants you to have good things. But you've got to, I mean, we've got a lot of charismatic Christians who are still not mature yet because everything about prosperity, about receiving from God is all about them. Now, they'll hide under the guise, I've got to be blessed to be a blessing. But they're not being the blessing. They're just wanting to be blessed. You see, you've got to come to the point there's more. it's more important for others to receive, to, get, to minister to others, to share the love of God. You know, that you're, that we, now balance that. You've got, to, you know, you've got to be able to stand in a place where you can believe God and have your needs met and take care of things. But there are people right now that if I were to hold a you can have what you say seminar in Greensboro and send out flyers say we're going to have so and so come in they're going to teach on how to get rich and, you know how to get the hundredfold return how to have supernatural debt cancellation and how to get what you say you know in 30 days or something like that they'd fill the building up and turn right around and had that same church and had to say have a guest speaker come in he's going to teach on how to reach the loss with what you have how to give all to the Lord, take up your cross and follow him, you wouldn't be able to hardly get anybody in the building. I mean, you'd have more church mice than you do people. What's that? That's a state on the status of the growth of the church. We're more concerned about us. Charismatics were some of the worst bunch, bunch out there. If the pastor starts preaching on commitment and sacrificing to the Lord, you pack up and head to a church that's going to tell you you can have everything you want no matter what it is. There's, what, we're not mature. We're not being spiritual. 
Okay? So Brother Hagin said the spiritual man is one who knows what belongs to him in Christ, takes advantage of it. He also feeds regularly at the table of the Lord and saturates himself in the love of God. The love of God constrains you. The love of God will cause you to do things for others you would not otherwise do do the love of god will drive you to be in a place where you can bless and help and do for others whereas when it's all about you it's just about me now some of the preachers out there are all about them they come up with sermon sermon statements like you got to give to the higher anointing to get blessed you need a shovel when they leave the building i'll let y'all figure that one out okay you get the bovine excrement out all right I mean, it's so deep. You know, what is it? That's making them rich. I'm the higher anointing. You've got to give to the higher anointing so God can put No, 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 no. Now, you're supposed to take care of he who treads out the corn. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. The labor is worthy of his hire, especially those who labor in word and deed. I get all that, and that's all biblical principle. And so we don't want to go to the other side back where all the Pentecostals used to say, Lord, you keep them humble, we'll keep them poor. Okay, that's, that's not biblical. But neither is coming over here and building your kingdom and telling people that if you don't give to me, you can't get blessed. Or I've got a special anointing on me to get, cause you to have supernatural debt. Can't give to me. Stuff it in my coat. Pack, I mean, pack it out. And you'll go, see, here, here's the problem with that. If I'm telling you that, then I'm all concerned about me. I really don't believe you're going to get that huge return on that. So what do I do? I teach you to give as the Lord leads you what's in your heart. Paul said that. He said, let every man give as he purposes in his own heart. Not begrudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. See? Now, if it's in your heart to come give me a bunch of money, then, and I'm not manipulating you into, that's what you've got to do to get something, that's okay. <coughs> but it may be in your heart to give it to, to somebody who has nothing. You know? Whatever you purpose in your heart or however God leads you, what you've got to do. We can't teach stuff. And preachers, you stop teaching. You can't keep preaching stuff that makes you rich at the expense of people. And God may have that money in Paul's hand to give to that person. But because he heard that sermon, he comes and gives it to me instead. And that person had a need that, that, that was desperate. See, the love of God won't let you do that. Because the love of God cares about people. I want people to give to me if God tells them to or if it's in their heart to do it. But I don't want them to give to me when God's trying to tell them to give it to somebody else under the guise that that's how God's going to make them even richer. You see? Then I've robbed that person of having their need met. And I've robbed that person who gave of hearing and following the Holy Ghost. You see? And if they're not following the Holy Ghost, they're not in faith. And if they're not in faith, they're in sin. Because whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So you could get in sin by being manipulated by the preacher to give to him. And the whole time you're thinking, "Woo, my debt's going to be paid off tomorrow. From a number of years ago, um, when we first came to Greensboro, about the second year we were here, first or second year we were here, uh, the guy came to the Coliseum there. I won't use his name. He came to the Coliseum, held a, held a meeting there. But he had done, he'd been there the year before. And uh, a couple of the guys in the church were going, oh, I'm going to go see something. We were there last year. It was awesome. Blah, 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 blah. They came back after the meeting. They were so dejected. I said, what's wrong, guys? I said, well, see, when you start getting taught good things, you, you don't take you long to figure out who's teaching bad stuff. When you've taught the good word of God. Now, see, when you don't get around the good word of God, you don't know that you don't know. See, the Bible says by, ex by, by use of exercising their senses, by use of the word, they're able to discern both good and evil. And uh, I said, well, you know, so he was here last year. It was really good. But uh, he took up an offering. And he's up on the stage taking up an offering. And starts saying, you know, if you'll do this and this, God's going to do this and this. And he turns around to the guy who works with him and says, I've never done this before anywhere, have I? The guy goes, no, you've never done it anywhere before. And uh, they said, he did the exact same thing last year when he was here. It just, it just, it, it just tore him up. Because the year before, they thought it was great. They had given him the offering. They thought, whoo, praise God, I'm obeying God. Come back the next year, and the guy uses the exact same scam. I've never done this before anywhere. And they were, they're going, you did it last year. And let me tell you, he did it last week. And the week before, and wherever he had been before, he's used, because that's how he makes big, gets big offerings. So you've manipulated the people. See, the love of God won't do that. Mature Christians and mature, mature preachers certainly won't do that. Okay? Um, 
Why? Because a spiritual man, number one, knows the Father. Spiritual man not only knows the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, he is intimately acquainted with the Father God. Okay? Um, Jesus said in John 17, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also glorify thee. As thou hast given power over all flesh, he should have eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee. Jesus saying, not might know you, the Father, and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. God sent Jesus, not just so we could have a relationship with Jesus. He wants us to know him. He is the Father. He's the head of the, he is the first person of the Godhead. He wants us to have a, know the Father. Okay? Je Jesus came revealing to the Jews something. They, they knew him as God. They knew him as Elohim. They knew him as <laughs> Yahweh or Jehovah. We, we, we've talked about that before. Maybe you all went in services. Yahweh and Jehovah come from the same four-letter Hebrew word. Y-H-W-H. The Germans, because they, they uh, have a J, J Hebrews don't, Jews don't have a J. They have a Y. Use the J for the Y. So it was J-H, and then they use a V for the W in German, so V-H. And they put vowels in there and became Jehovah. Okay? That's where you got Jehovah from. Now you've heard Yahweh. So I just took the four letters and put an A and an A-E in there and made it Yahweh. All right? It comes from the same Hebrew four letters. So whether you say Jehovah or Yahweh, it's, it's, it's accurate. And so they knew him as Yahweh. They knew him as Jehovah. They knew him as Elohim. They knew him as uh, El Shaddai. They knew him as all kinds of things, but they didn't know him as Father. And Jesus came to reveal the Father to us. Amen. The Father heart of God. Hallelujah. He desires for us to grow in fellowship with him and know him as our Heavenly Father. Praise God. Jesus said, pray that our Father which is in heaven. Not just God, which is our Father. He wanted us to know the Father. He wanted us to know the reality of the living. Is it? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wanted us to understand and have that relationship with him. And am I going to finish this today? No way. Hallelujah. We're going to stop right here. God wants you to know him as Father. He wants, to, he wants you to have a relationship with the Father. Not just the Son. Yeah. See, most charismatics are really comfortable with the Son and the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost! <laughs> Sam about used to say, I love the Holy Spirit, but something about that Holy Ghost! Yeah, we, we could get into that. You know, that <laughs> same Greek word translated, uh, pneuma, and the Druids and the King James Bible translated it goes because they were very superstitious. So they, they translated spirit, n ghost. Okay? But it's, it's the Holy Spirit. Technically, the Greek, it really is Holy Spirit. But they tra the King James, Jimmy translator guys, the, the, uh, the Irish Gaelics translated this ghost when they were translating the King James Bible. That's where it came from. And, uh, but it was translated from the pneuma, pneuma, the Greek word pneuma. Both Holy Spirit and ghost came from that Greek word. Okay? But, the Father, so, but most charismatics, boy, they love the Holy Ghost and they love Jesus. But they don't know the Father. And God wants us to know him. The Father. The Father wants us to have a relationship with Him. Jesus came to restore us to the Father. Hallelujah. So we, Jesus is our Savior. The Holy Ghost is our empowerment. But the Father is our Father. Hallelujah. And see, mature Christians come to have a relationship with the Father too. They're not afraid of Him. He's not just the man upstairs. He's not the big guy. He's not God. He's our Father. He's our Heavenly Father. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.